Matt Zuccarello signed with the Wild this summer, it was a perfect fit on many fronts. Not just his high-end talent and work ethic, but off the ice as well as this Oslo native was headed to a hockey-crazed state with an abundance of Norwegian fans. Over 500 NHL games, 100 NHL goals, Olympics, the Worlds, a wealth of playoff experience, and a compete factor which is off the charts high. Becoming Wild was very happy to head 4,000 miles east and spend a beautiful day with Mats in his hometown of Oslo, Norway. I'm not a big breakfast guy, so I, uh, I have a quick uh, half of this. I'm a bad morning guy, so usually if I have to be somewhere, I get up five minutes before so I can sleep the longest. We're at my old rink now where I grew up. The local team here that plays in the highest division, they let me uh, work out with them all summer and uh, train with them when we get on the ice, practice and stuff. So. Uh, some of my friends that I grew up with also still plays on the team and I appreciate that. Legend, he used to play in Columbus. He's probably the best Norwegian hockey player ever lived. Now he's, uh, he's a little bit uh, chubby now, but uh, he's... Uh... <laughs> when I was a kid, he was a big star in Norway, so he was, uh, he was a role model. And now, now we're friends. I like to practice here with the team and, and, and be a part of it. I, I played with that team when I was a kid and grew up here, so it's, it's always nice to come back. And it's, it's old and it's got a charm. He's my best, best friend. Huh? Don't worry. Yeah, he, he used to play here and now he works here. We grew up together, so um, yeah. That was random that, was, that he was here now. We basically uh, grew up together and uh, used to play on uh, rival teams. I was a goalie, and uh, Mats was the top scorer on the opposite team, so I used to hate him pretty much because he always scored on me, so he was a pain in the ass back then, and uh, now he became a pretty nice guy after all, so uh, that's good for him. This team's uh, called the Volerenga. Plays in the top division here in Norway. A lot of the guys work during the season and stuff like that, so it's not a full uh, pro league, but it's, it's the highest uh, in Norway, and they work out like crazy, and uh, some really good players as well. He was very good, obviously he was small. So he played in Hasle Olen till he was 10 years old. And after that was uh, Volerenga. Every day he had fun with the ball. He was very good in soccer. And you saw the early in the year, he was an athlete in tennis, in football, soccer and hockey. So he was having fun all the time. You work super hard in the summer, strength, weight, so you're kind of a little stiff, your body's stiffer and take some time to loosen it up and, and uh, get your head and, and hands into the game as well. I'm on these guys' schedule, you know, so they, they let me uh, practice with them all, all summer and, and, and August here, so I, I'm, I just follow their schedule. I schedule and work out and stuff, and I do a little bit on my own outside as well. So. I'm probably the worst player out here today, so uh, a lot of good players. Uh, good to see that uh, they're ready to go for the season, so uh, yeah, I'm, uh, it's fun to be out here. I think the match is a huge part of the hockey growth in Norway, so uh, we're really happy and we're really proud of him. Every Norwegian uh, with a good uh, hockey heart is uh, very proud of Mats because he's uh, one of the best uh, not players we have had, but he is uh, in the mind, and he's kind with the children, and he's a very good uh, ambassador for uh, Norwegian hockey. This is a cool little area I built um, down here. One of my old teammates owns a company, and they came in and put all the stuff together, so it's nice um, when I don't skate or when I'm not skating yet. 
um, during the summer I'll come down here um, a few times a week and, and shoot some pucks. So this was always ice from here to there and then it would put the, the ring and this was the area that we played at and we thought that's the biggest ring in the world. <laughs> My dad would build, it was actually a garbage can and you would flip it upside down and then you could see uh, over the class and you could watch the games when you were growing up. Sporting Eye is the club in Norway with the most uh, enthusiastic fans. We are the club with the longest history, the most championships. It's the club in Norway with the most hockey culture. Bali stew with uh, beef and rice and salad. Tomorrow it's uh, taco. This is the area I grew up. Um, I've been living in the same area for, for my whole life, and my mom too. My mom's lived there since she was uh, born. We had a place in this uh, condo in here, and up here you, you can see it's like a lot of green stuff. Uh, soccer, I played soccer. It's a pond here when you played uh, pond hockey. Um, I would be out there from 9 o'clock until 7, 8 o'clock. My mom would come with a little bit of food and we would just uh, stay all day. So Fresh air, cold, you know, you got a hat on. You feel so free when you're like out there on the pond and, and doing what you love. So uh, I think for me it's um, something that shaped me or, or helped me get to where I am today. So. During the season, I'm, I'm, it's really nice to relax, you know, between games. And in the summer, it's hard. Like you, it's hard for me to just sit still. So I like to be do something so I don't get bored. That's still with me today. This is my school where I grew up until I was 14. Yeah. But uh, it was kind of old, so now they're working on it a little bit. It's, it's about time, so that's good. I played in Norway until I was 19, 20 or something like that. And then I went to uh, Sweden for two years. They scouted me a little bit in Sweden and I had a, I went to Moto. Oh, in my first NHL game, I remember I scored on a penalty shot. Slows down, fakes, scores! My mom, my brother, my stepdad was there. It's important to, to share those uh, memorable stuff with, with your family, you know, who's been there from, from day one, and it's special. This is called uh, Holman Colon. It's, uh, it's where the famous uh, ski jump uh, is. Um, sometimes I, I bike up here from, from where I live. It's a lot of stairs, you can jump, you can work out. Um, it's kind of famous around here, it's cool. Every game you get to play in the NHL, it's special. You're lucky, you know, so I uh, try to do the best every game you can. And now Minnesota, that's a really team that everyone knows, and it's a big hockey state, and uh, it's, I'm so excited to feel the energy in, in, in the city and at the rink and everything like that. I'm just super excited about the whole thing. Yeah, so this is the city. Oslo Fjord, this is like uh, the ocean out to the ocean and then if you want to go to like a summer hiking with the fjords and, and stuff like that, you go up north and it's nice. For more Becoming Wild presented by Toyota, make sure and go to wild.com. I've learned the biggest thing is, for me, is, is on ice. You know, recovery at the end of the season, mentally and physically, making sure you're healthy. And then once you're back in the gym, it's, you know, getting that strength back, being strong in all areas, and then, and then translating to on the ice. We usually played, played here or on the street, and I can remember we, this wall wasn't uh, much left of uh, before they uh, 
did the construction, we were standing here shooting pucks and uh, I don't know, sometimes the neighbors wasn't uh, too happy, but... Uh, this is just where I like to be. You know, I really love uh, being around, you know, some of my old teammates and there's a great group of pro guys. Tom Gilbert, Joe Pavelski, Craig Smith, you know, the list goes on and on of guys that uh, you can surround yourself with and, uh, you know, kind of push yourself. So I want to be uh, like those guys one day, so I think uh, it's pretty nice to have. We work out the whole summer and we skate twice today with the team, so uh, just a little agility, some soccer. I, I, I do a lot of uh, Small, like uh, mini tennis and, and soccer and, and stuff like that as, as warm ups and, and during my workouts. So it gets boring, you know, when you've worked out for 15 years now uh, every summer and uh, just lift the weights and run and do that stuff. So try to lurk in some fun stuff to do as well. Our game plan today is more kind of a little bit plyometric uh, sprinting. But before we do that, we do some warm-up, and then he will run and do some agility stuff. He's eight years in the head, and I'm nine years old in the head, so probably this is a good start to warm-up. Oi, oi, oi! The ball only dropped once. Ay, ay, ay. Retouch. He needs to do stuff like this because he's funny. He's a funny guy. He needs to laugh, he needs to, to run after something to have it fun. Oh. Ten nine. Have to win with two. Still three sets, so still have the chance. Oh, yo, yo! I never lost him ever in this game. He always wants to win, always, even if it's uh, yeah, it's in everything. He wants to win, so it's, uh, that's why you have a good goal for, for sports. Aye, no, 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 no. Aye. Set point is 1-1 one, one in sets. So we play to five points. We have to have a winner. me there but he was weak mentally he was he was up 7-1 second set one? first first set took my shoes that's why next just a uh, little bit agility and of course you have to have a carrot in the end so use my left leg now One beer for me. <laughs> if you have fun, you can practice much more than if you don't have fun. So that's uh, the main thing. getting closer and closer, then we take a little bit more of the weight off. 
And in the end of, uh, let's see, two, three weeks more, we're running only with this. This is really light and fast. So I had him in the national team, so I've been there for 13 years in the national squad for Norway. I know him since he was quite young, and, uh, but he's the same. He's still exactly the same guy. I think it's enough now. We have uh, had a really good session this morning, and this is a good mid-session with a lot of sprints and stuff. And now he's going to have some fun in the next practice on ice. A couple of hard weeks now, so I'm tired. So that's my uh, brother's place over here, and that's only like a couple minutes with the boat. So they've been here for 20 years almost, probably. Vida. They were just having a sauna, so that's the Finnish tradition, and, and uh, there he is. As I said earlier, I'm I have OCD, so I'm pretty particular with with all of my things. Um, I don't fold anything. All of my stuff's hung up, and um, it actually goes from my favorite shirt to my least favorite, but I have hockey shirts in here from, from years past. And Dubinsky goes wide, dangling, held in front, paddle down Ward, Zuccarello, centers one, he scores! First NHL goal, Mats Zuccarello, and the Rangers win in overtime. What a way to score it. But Zuccarello, I mean, he, he's a five-night player that has built an abode around the net. It's kind of nice to have, like, you have the city and then you have the ocean straight out. And my buddy has a boat right here, so uh, on a day like this, if it wasn't for all the practices, we would go out, out in the ocean here and just drive out and relax out there. I would say it's similar maybe to Minnesota, maybe a little colder in Minnesota, but I do enjoy uh, the season, you know, it makes you appreciate the summer a little bit more. Um, and a cozy night with snow outside and, and movie and a game the next day is not get that special for, for me. So uh, during the winter it can be cold and, and painful, but uh, it makes you enjoy the summer so much more. So I really appreciate it. Well, now it's the uh, second uh, skate, so I'll uh, join this too. It's, it's fun, you know, we just play a little bit pong hockey, just a couple of drills, and then it gives me an opportunity to be on the ice a little bit more. Uh, like you saw this morning, I really need it, so uh, it's good. No, huh? fan base is um, named Klon and uh, they're actually coming tonight to watch uh, the first official practice and uh, they're very enthusiastic. Everyone in Norway that follows hockey follows maths. I would say actually more people follow maths than they follow hockey in Norway. He's a big uh, role model in Norway and uh, it's the athlete uh, through all of sports, actually, in Norway, that has achieved the most. For more Becoming Wild, presented by Toyota, make sure and go to wild.com. I go barefoot in my skates, which a lot of trainers don't like, because it it breaks down the skates a lot a lot quicker. I've just never been able to wear socks on my skates. 
Even my shoes, I don't like wearing socks with them. I wear sandals most of the time just because they're the most comfortable, but yeah, no socks for my skates. Nice, one more goal and I win. Nice shot. We're in overtime now for the Stanley Cup. Oh! There it is. Go get it. So, Zach wins the Stanley Cup yet again. on the stand today that they're proud of their team and the first uh, official practice on ice after a long summer and hot summer. It's good to come into the cold again and see their hockey team. The game plan is to uh, shoot out after the practice and if you, if you miss you have to take something off in front of a couple of hundred people in the arena today. So yeah, it's a nice way to show them a warm and cold welcome. <laughs> it's a tradition you have every year. If you don't score, you have to go naked. The players, the coaches are proud of Norwegian hockey and achieved uh, great results uh, during the last uh, 10 years. So Mats has always been proud for uh, Proud about being a Norwegian on for the national team, and he's a great guy outside the rink as well. So we all love him here in Norway. Thank you for joining me here. Um, I'm super excited to get to Minnesota and get to know all of you.